The health minister, Mark Holland, was called before the Standing Committee on Health, immediately gets in the room and begins to start arguments with all of the Conservatives. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Like I said, Mark Holland was called to the Standing Committee on Health, and he came in very hostile, very combative. He came in very unprepared. He brought one piece of paper with him, expecting that whatever he says goes. He's talking to a bill where the Liberals are trying to stop the sale of homeopathic and natural products, expecting that all of that industry can be given over. The $7 billion a year industry can be given over exclusively to the three or four pharmaceutical companies that exist in the world. And the conservatives who authored, one of the conservatives, Dr. Ellis, who's also an MP, who authored the bill, and Mark Holland don't see, seem to see eye to eye on the subject. But before I get into it, I would just point out that this is the second time the, uh, in, what is it? The First Nations minister came into the um, Northern Affairs Committee and was very hostile, so hostile and very evasive and wasting everybody's time that they called her back to the meeting. Like they called her again because she just didn't answer anybody's questions. And I suspect that it has something to do with the fact that the liberals are not getting their way. And like all um, wounded narcissists, when they don't get their way, they just act out and they lash out. That's what I think it is. I, I, I would point to the how many times I hear the liberals stand up and say, oh, we'll work with anybody. Apparently not. Anyway, it starts right out of the gate. I mean, this is the first round of questions. It's here, you know, everybody, he said his piece and he goes, okay, first six minutes to the Conservatives. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Minister, you know, we've been down this road before with you, and I guess let's start with some simple questions. You, you like to use some very emotionally charged language. How many Canadians don't have a family doctor? Uh, so just the number. Simple. Well, according to the most uh, recent report that was just released by Kai Hai, uh, there it, it depends on province. So you say Ontario is at eighty-eight percent who just, do just the number. The lowest province. The, the lowest province about seventy-nine percent. Territories are lower, particularly in Nunavut being the lowest. Minister, I'm going to interrupt you because again, we're, you and I have gone down this road many times, and you said you've read the report. How many? I'll, I'll say it perhaps slowly and clearer for you. How many Across Canadians the country, it's known have, to be about 82 percent have excuse a. Excuse me, Minister. Okay. Don't interrupt me. This is not your time for questions. You'll have lots of time when you're in opposition to ask questions, if you so desire, or if you're able to keep your seat. That being <laughs> said, how many Canadians don't have access to primary care in Canada? Just the number. Uh, it's estimated at 6.5 million. It, actually, if you read the Kaihai report, it says 5.4 million adults. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So tell me this, is that number going up or going down? Uh, in every province, in every territory, with I believe one exception, uh, that the uh, access to doctor is improving. There's been more doctors added, more nurses added. That's in the yeah. baseline Kai High report, so uh, that's actually before uh, our investment again, of Minister, $200 billion. Again, Minister, I don't think that's dollars. what I asked you, is the number of Canadians who do not have access to a primary care physician going up or going down? Access is going up. Uh, that In the baseline report, we see every province and yeah. every territory access to more doctors, more nurses in almost every jurisdiction. That's a baseline report that is before the interventions of our signed agreements with every province, every territory, $200 billion being yeah. applied. But we know and very I can talk clearly, about all the different me, ways sir, that we're improving me, that sir, circumstance, but conservative cuts are that stuff. You know, again, if you don't want to be respectful, why do you even bother coming here? If I, all I'm you sorry, want I don't do, find your questions or your demeanor if you, if respectful, all you want so I don't, I don't know why I should ask, reciprocate ask something that is not extended. Of order speak order. Order. So now everybody starts to jump in and they try to uh, contend, you know, that, but I don't believe that Mark Holland sat down wanting to be respectful in any way, shape, or form. I think that the um, minister... Ellis knew what it was what he was going to be hearing, right? And you can tell. I mean, he asked him a straightforward question. Probably took him ten seconds to ask the question. How many doctors? If that, maybe th five seconds. And this guy's meandering all over, right? I mean, everybody knows what the filibuster is. Everybody knows that you're wasting their time so that you don't have to answer any of the questions. What I don't understand is why, if they if they are aware that we all can see right through them, do they continue to do it? 
Why in their mind are they going to somehow win an argument by avoiding having the discussion or the debate? Why are they by not answering the question telling themselves that they're gaining something? They don't, the more he, he meanders all over, the less I trust him. And I, from the second I saw this guy, I knew he was, there's only one word that applies to this guy where I come from, we would have called him a blowhard. He never shuts up and he never speaks directly. And he loves the sound of his own voice. If you knew him in the private world, I would guarantee you that those, all those things would be, would be true of him because he just meanders and discusses and bounces all over the place. And it's a tactic. It's a trick. He tries to take control of the conversation by talking to you really loud and really quickly like that. It's, it's, you know, Dale Carnegie, it's, it's, it's very pedestrian and MP Ellis obviously knew that, but of course everybody has to jump in and try to act like it's all virtue. When I just think that the liberal party is really being kind of immature and they don't want to come to committee and answer any questions that will be helpful or that will paint them into a bad light. So now they're going to try and talk about how MP Mark Holland was, you know, being very reasonable. You saw it, you can decide. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. So I'm uh, patiently listening to Mr. Alice's questioning and I'm starting, failing to see any relevance to the topic at hand, which is this particular bill dealing with natural health products. So unless he's got a long-winded way of getting to uh, the presentation that was we heard and the bill that we are reviewing, love like him to focus on the bill that we're talking about. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's valid. I'm not sure that there's a connection between access to family doctors and this private member's bill. This is not an examination of estimates where it's it's much more wide open. So I, uh, I, I, do, I do hope and expect that Dr. Ellis will get to the point. I think it is a valid point of order. Did you have another one, Ms. Goodridge, or is it on this point? Uh, I have a point of order on this point of order. Um, the minister just very clearly said that he doesn't plan on respecting my colleague because he has decided that that is not something he's going to do. I don't think that, that is befitting of a formal committee meeting. I agree with I her. Think there's, um, I think it's reciprocal, quite frankly, and it's, and it's too bad. Uh, the, the witness merits respect, as does the person posing the question, and uh, that's... Uh, why don't we why don't we treat everyone with respect around here, please? I, I, I wouldn't pin it on one side or the other based on what I've heard so far. Did you have something you want to say, uh, Minister? Chair, my, reflection, my reflection was simply if, yeah. that if, if, if I'm attacked and, and treated in the way that I am, I'm going to respond. And, and, and absolutely, yeah. I'm okay. here to answer, answer questions. Okay. But I, I would suggest, Mr. Chair, that perhaps we yeah. could start with things germane Excuse to this me, bill. Chair. Perhaps a way that's the way to the witness finding the solutions. Who controls this committee? Is it you, Chair, yes. or yes. is it the yes. minister? Please, Dr. This is Ellis. Ridiculous. The minister has the floor. It's ridiculous. The, the minister has the floor. Ridiculous. I do not. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you that in, 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 look, I was in opposition. I've been in the position that they are in where you ask questions. Okay. See what I mean? And I am saying that there is a there, there's, there's, it, not only is the Thank conversation you. not relevant, Thank but you. I don't think okay. it's at all respectful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Now, uh, Mr. Doherty has a point of order. Uh, Mr. Chair, it is commonplace uh, within this committee as well as other committees that I've sat on that the length of a question uh, is then therefore applied to the length of the answer where the frustration uh, comes with this minister is that he tends to go on beyond the length of the time that it took to ask the question. Um, we, as you know, uh, members are given a specific allotment of time and it is frustrating when you have ministers appear, not just this minister, but other ministers appear. And I know that this minister uh, is well versed in the in the art of what we call ragging the puck, and and so are other ministers, taking up the time of the, each member. So when um, when my colleague and others ask a simple question, just a number, that's all that they look to to receive. If we wanted the statistics for each province, I would offer through you, Mr. Chair, that that would then bode the answer that the minister was going down. I, I can see that my uh, that my colleague has done research and has a number of questions that he would like to ask. So I would ask through you to our minister, is that if 
if and when he can be concise, to please be concise. The point of order, Chair. Yes, Dr. Ellis. Yeah, I know this is painful for you. I understand that. <laughs> but since when does a witness get to direct a committee? All I suggest to you, and I know you won't like this, but do your job. Ms. Sidhu, do you have a point of order, or do you want to intervene on this one? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, we invited a minister. Let's be respectful. When we are asked the question, minister has the right to give the answer. That's my point. Thank you. So that was pretty, uh, you know, pretty, pretty caustic. There was a lot of hostility in that room. You can tell. I don't agree with um, Mark Holland's position, and I certainly don't agree that the chair should have let him speak. This is the, the nature of when you have a, a party like the Liberal Party, where they are, you know, all about who's in charge, and they 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 punish right later, right when they when these nobody's looking, they were like, I was in committee, and you didn't do this, 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 and this, and now everybody's going to ostracize you or whatever it is. Like they 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 treat people like they're in elementary school. Now I can't understand why anybody would fall for that as for the last lady their mp i don't know her name talking about how it should be respectful and let him answer see that's what the liberals keep trying to say oh let me answer no if you're look <clears throat> there's an old saying right just because you can hear somebody doesn't mean you know how to listen and just because you're talking doesn't mean that you're answering words coming out of your no mouth that don't match the question how many doctors, how many Canadians don't have doctors? And he obviously knew the answer because they both read the same report. But he went all over the place. So that's not an answer to the question. If they were, if they were being straightforward, if they were being honest, we wouldn't be sitting here saying to ourselves, they're hiding something. But they're clearly hiding something. Is it they're hiding something from the, the report? Is it they're hiding their complete note of contempt for anybody that's not a, a far-left liberal? Who can say with absolute certainty? But they're obviously hiding something. And I don't believe that this behavior is indicative of a person who says we're willing to work with anybody. And I don't believe that this is this behavior is indicative to let's work out our problems for Canadians. This is great school stuff where they're mad at somebody because they live on a different street or they whatever it may be. It's childish, it's immature, and it's unnecessary. Three minutes and 37 seconds. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, so, Minister, before uh, all of the bombast, uh, back to the questioning here. When we begin to look at Canadians, of course, because of your mismanagement of the health file, they have to look after themselves <laughs> uh, by, by virtue of turning to things such as natural health products. So your ineptitude, of course, has led many Canadians, of course, which we've heard from uh, using natural health products. That being said, how many Canadian seniors are hospitalized every year because of pharmaceutical products? Right. I believe that I was here for natural health products. I don't blame the member for not wanting to ask questions about this terrible bill. I wouldn't want to talk about this terrible bill either. So I understand his desire to talk about anything but this awful bill. I could tell him, because I'll bring it back to the bill, 772 severe adverse reactions from natural health products that this member oh, is supporting a bill that would not allow gonna, our I'm ability to recall products that have those kinds of, of so the kinds of possible uh, Minister, you, uh, Minister, yeah. please go ahead, Dr. Ellis. Chair, you know, clearly what we're seeing here is an aversion to answering questions. Very simply, this will connect. I know it's difficult for you. How many Canadian <laughs> seniors are hospitalized every year due to pharmaceutical products? I understand that it's just the number, Minister. I understand that it's. I, I get the same amount of time as he asked the question. Is that the rule? Yep. I don't understand that it's difficult for you to understand that I'm here on natural health products. That that is the purpose of this study, and I understand why you wouldn't Thank ask you very much, answer Minister, questions. I'll, on I will it. interrupt you once again. Just the number. How many? I'm here to talk about natural health products, and oh, it's the so, purpose of this study, so and I want again, to talk about it. I'm not going to let you off you, the Minister. hook to not talk about your own thank bill. Thank you, Minister. Once again, I'll, I'll, I'll move along because you clearly have no clue how many Canadian seniors are hospitalized every year due to pharmaceutical products, which, again, are under your purview. Would you care to answer that on behalf of Canadians or no? Simple answer. If you don't want to, or you don't know the answer, it's okay. <laughs> when I'm... 
not going to do is engage in a attempt to not talk about this bill. <laughs> you have not asked any questions related to this bill because you don't want to talk about how deadly this bill is. The mm -hmm. fact that you would leave Thank you very much, products Minister. on the shelves are dangerous to Canadians' health. You know, the, the difficulty, of course, is, ministers, that 13,000 Canadians are harmed by pharmaceutical problems. Uh, products wow. every year, seniors hospitalized, 13,000, just because people need a reference. All you want to do is talk, you know, down to Canadians about feces and lead, all your fantastical words, of course, that's what your attempt to do. Minister, very simple question, how much does the NHP industry contribute to the GDP of Canada on a yearly basis? Enormously. Uh, it is a booming industry, Just a multi billion number, dollar industry. Oh, I, am I allowed to answer the question yeah, at the same could, time that you took to ask? You have another 25 seconds to answer the question. Thank you. It's a booming industry. It is a growing industry. It is a multi billion dollar industry. But one of the things that will protect that industry is ensuring that the that, that industry um, uh, is afforded the protection of being able Thank to recall you. Thank you very much, Minister. I still, your, your I time is up. But once again, I'll, I'll ask you to the number. Look, Mr. Chair, do I still have. Yes, go ahead. So one of the things that's when you're talking about adverse no, effects on no, pharmaceuticals, the idea that there's adverse effects on pharmaceuticals, so therefore you do nothing about natural health products? You just leave the people who have adverse affection, uh, effects for Thank natural you, health Mr. products with nothing? Thank you. How you draw your own conclusions. That being said, because of your uh, negative <laughs> effects on the natural health product industry, how many businesses are saying they're considering shuttering operations in Canada? Vanessa's law does not affect any compliant or any business attempting to be compliant at all. Cost of businesses that are complying, pl compliant thank, or thank attempting you very to be much, compliant Minister. is no, exactly thank zero thank dollars. You, thank thank you, zero Minister. dollars. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. That's your time. Thank you. Well, I think that we can see Mark Holland's hiding something. And no matter what he claims about taking the, the same amount of time, I mean, the, those questions took 10 seconds. And he just meandered all over the place. He was, you know... A BS artist, that's what that guy is. He, he, he doesn't care what comes out of his mouth. He just thinks because he's talking, everyone should stop and listen. I know I've known lots of guys like that. And I'm telling you right now, uh, he's not saying anything. There's nothing, being, there's nothing coming out of his mouth that has any, uh, any merit to it just because he, he finds the right tone or inflection or whatever it is. Cause there, there's, because if you know how to listen, you heard him say nothing at all. You heard him try to slip in that there were 700 adverse reactions to the uh, homeopathic stuff, but the 13,000 he sloughed off, right? You heard him say that if you comply with us, there will be no uh, changes to your business if you comply, right, to the Marxism, right, to the Marxists. If you do as they tell you, then the pharmaceutical industry will come in, take over your store, put all of the small businesses out of work, put all of the um, middle class into destruction while all of the money tries to get funneled to the, to the pharmaceutical industry. The, obviously, the guy has no intention of doing the right thing because if he did, he would speak to the merit. But he avoided all of that because he knows when he compares the two, his stats are terrible. That's my opinion. And, and I base that, well, I watched the whole committee or most of it so I understand it, like the other things that were said and the way that he behaved. But if I had not seen any of it, I would just know that that's a guy who's up to something. Right, because he, he presents himself as a BS artist, because he doesn't follow the rules that you expect him to follow, right? Those rules are only for you, not for him. Him, he can do whatever he wants. You, I'm just gonna start whining to the teacher. I'm gonna start whining to the, to the chair. I'm just gonna start whining. I'm gonna play cry bully. Oh, you interrupted me. You left him no choice. You left him no opportunity, no option. That was the only option that was available to him. And because the chair is deep in, in his pocket, of course they had to be, he had to treat them all like hostile witnesses. But this is supposed to be the health minister. And I would expect that no matter who he's talking to, he would worry about the, the jacket long before he worries about whether or not he gets along with the guy or whether or not he agrees with the legislation. Then you can say that there's something to his, to his uh, input. Otherwise, all I saw was a guy who came in looking for a fight. That's my opinion. You can leave me your opinion down in the comments. All right, I'm going to wrap here.
I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.